post tax day. Did you get all that business all taken care of? It is what it is. But welcome to another edition of Inside the Pigskin. And boy, do we have a full house today. And I have a feeling we're going to go ahead and have a full chat room. With that said, let me introduce my Hall of Fame crew. First and foremost, at the top, buried behind my book, maybe in the worst thing. But now we got him there. Smoking Jeremy B. Welcome to the big show. Hello, everybody. Glad to be here. Hey, and those salutes, Josh, are for you and your other people. So don't say this guy didn't salute nothing. He did, and he didn't waste any time to do it either. All right. With that said, we go over to Travis Sherlock Holmes. Travis. Thank you for having me. Happy almost NFL week, uh, NFL draft week. Absolutely. All right. And then we, from there, we move on to the coach, Bono. Great to be here. Thanks for having me, Scott. Good to see oh, you guys. Yeah. Oh, great to see you. I'll tell you, we got some busy stuff next week. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what's going to happen next week. All I know is going to be a wild, wild, wild. And we'll call it the wild, wild Midwest, not West. Okay. So with that said, football talk with Bo. We'll be doing a lot of talking, and Bo is a part of this whole program. Thanks for having me on, guys. And last but not least, our superstar running back, Mel Farr without the beard. Hey, what's going on, guys? Sorry, I missed oh, yeah. you guys last week. Oh, that's okay. Well, we got to make sure we had you on this week. We got a lot of business to sell from. Uh, with that said, got to go and our producer tonight is Candy Ebling. Candy Ebling obviously will be accompanying myself, smoking Jeremy B, and the rest of our crew there. Candy's going to have a very busy time in that chat room, guys. So, so get on your horse and let's ride it. So let's go ahead and bring it up, Candy. Better put them all up before I get to that first topic, all right? Start from the top, T-O-P. All right, yeah, finally, Josh. Okay, that's all right. We got to make sure we're all on the same page. And mark my word, Joshua Dorr, we have plenty of things. To do. Uh, look at what are you smoking tonight. On the show, he doesn't smoke anything. The only one that ever smokes anything on the show that I know is Dom Derubas. Other than that, I don't know anybody else in my knowledge. No okay. knock against Dom, but... There has to be some broadcast that again. I like Tom. Looking forward to finally meeting this guy hopefully next week. So the shame wasn't uh, well. There you go, Mel. Look at this. My, my, when you're not here, they all miss you. That's what Joshua said. To me. That, that means the check cash. Thank you, Joshua. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Check okay. and, and rocket scientist. Okay, we're, we're going to get to your next question in a moment. So let me go over the topics a little bit quick. And rocket scientists will be able to answer it. We're going to be talking a little bit about O.J. Simpson, Michigan football. We're going to talk about Caleb Williams. We're going to talk about the helmet performance. Obviously, there's a new standard here. And last but not least, we're going to even sprinkle in a bit of T.J. Hawkinson as well. With that said, though, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and lead off with this one here, Bo. Rocket Scientist has been anxious to get this one out. So he says, Bo, do you... Uh, do you live in Seattle? I just moved to Texas from Washington. I lived in Edgewood. Uh, yeah, so I do live in the Seattle area. I am uh, currently in Kenmore. So, yeah. Okay, there you go. You got it. All right, well, let's start off with O.J. Simpson, okay? O.J. Simpson and his family won't be donating his brain to scientists to see if he had C -E -C -T -E, Excuse me. He was scheduled to be cremated today in Las Vegas. So, you know, it's a subjective opinion. So we'll start at the top with Mel. What are your thoughts about O.J. Simpson? Obviously not donating his brain to science. This, I mean, his whole body is going to be cremated anyway. So he wanted everything there and he wasn't leaving any answers to be had about speculation. No. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a personal choice uh, for him, him and his family. Um, you know, I, I think it would have been nice, obviously, so we can continue to uh, study the effects of concussions on players. <clears throat> you know, I know I made the decision to go ahead and donate mine. Um, I, my dad did his. My uncle was trying to do uh, donate his, but he was a little bit too late uh, in getting that done. <clears throat> but I, I think it's something that, you know, players should, con should consider. But again, you know, that's a personal decision. You know, as far as OJ and, and his legacy, I know He's a very polarizing figure, but as far as a football player is concerned, especially a young African-American football player, he's everything you, that you aspire to be, uh, particularly at the running back position. You know, he's big, he was strong, uh, he was charismatic. Uh, you know, he 
he, you know, he was a guy that, uh, you know, was one of the first guys to get one of those national sponsorships, um, you know, with Hertz rental car. And so when you're a young athlete, like I said, in particular a running back, he was everything you aspired to be in a football player. And then, uh, you know, what you were, you know, what you hope to do off the field with his broadcasting uh, movies, like I said, you know, uh, the endorsement deals that he received, but, you know, I know again, you know, he's a polarizing figure, uh, OJ, OJ, like he said, he was OJ. He wasn't black. He was OJ. He was, he was a little bit different, but still you had to respect the talent. You know, what he was able to do in a 14 game season is unheard of. And of course it'll probably never be seen again because, you know, we, the game has changed, you know, it's all about throwing now. It's not about running the football anymore, but you know, big fast. I, I, and I was there, uh, I think it was 1975 or 1976 in the silver dome when he went for 273 on thanksgiving now they lost but he went for 273 and uh he it was a sight to be seen you know i was a huge oj simpson fan and then going to ucla and i love playing at the coliseum and you see all those great heisman trophy winners over there mike garrett and, and, and you know obviously marcus allen and, and oj i mean that was a big thrill for me to see those guys because you know those that's that's what you, that's what you aspire to be you want to be one of the greats and you know, truly, OJ was one of the greats on the football field. But, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, I don't know what happened that day. Um, I, you know, that's only for God to judge. But, you know, as far as what he did on the football field, you know, there's, you know there, there weren't many better. Okay. All right. Jeremy? Man, uh, what else is there to say about OJ? I mean, we already went over the is he or is he not guilty of what he did. The Court of Appeal you know, did, handled that. As far as them not wanting to donate their brain, you know, that's common with a lot of people not wanting to donate anything to science to be studied because they feel like it goes against anything religious beliefs. So maybe that has something to do with it. Who knows? But it is the family's decision, and I'm going to respect it because that's the way it should be. Okay, that's fair enough. Okay, Travis? This was a weird one because obviously, I mean, we we can all we all know OJ's history. We know he's not the normal uh, athlete, uh, and by no means. I mean, was he ever the normal athlete? But after everything that happened uh, with the trial, he, he's not the normal guy. So at that point, I'm I'm having to evaluate him not like a normal guy. As far as being an athlete, yes, I fully understand uh, that most athletes, most NFL football players, and even some college and uh, high school football players have been donating their brains uh, to, you know, for the research for CTE. I get it. Um, no different than a lot of soccer players are doing, kind of doing that same thing, and it's great for it. But however, OJ's different. OJ's more like a, I, I, I don't know, like a, a, a I don't want to call the man a terrorist because that's not fair, but someone who does something bad. And it doesn't matter whether or not that person was diagnosed as being crazy. It doesn't matter if they were posthumously diagnosed as, being, as having CTE or any other mental condition for those families who may have been impacted in that situation. All it does is make everything messier after death. And that makes his situation simply different. Um, there, I mean, we, you have to kind of evaluate it from that perspective. So I understand the family just wanted to be done with it because his, hey man, his life's over. It, it is what it is. Whatever happened, happened that he's, you know, he went to jail for a different situation than whatever happened. But at the end of all of it, if either he's going to be diagnosed with CTE and I don't know what the NFL gets sued next because they have something to do with what potentially happened if he did it, um, you know, based on the name of the book that, you know, he wrote or it, he, he wasn't. But at the end of the day, it just makes it all messy. So I understand them not wanting to do it. OK, that's fair enough. OK. So, Coach? Man, not a whole lot more that I think I can add to, you know, between Mel and uh, and Travis. I think, uh, yeah, I, you know, going back to uh, Mel, Mel's first point, it's, uh, it's an individual decision. It's a family decision. And as far as I'm concerned, the way I think, like, it stops right there. You know, it's, that's, that's what they wanted. That's what he wanted. And bang, you know, so... Um, I understand it. Um, I kind of see all sides of it. I think, uh, you know, <clears throat> is one more brain going to make much difference, you know, in the studies? What data will they glean off of that? And I think, you know, 
I vibe with where Travis was going on, on his, you know, responses, you know, maybe there's other motives for that, you know, maybe the, the people that are, maybe there's, maybe it's, uh, you know, a way of like, uh, just getting more attention, but not necessarily maybe in the most positive way. So, um, yeah, I, I, again, for me, the bottom line is it's a personal decision and that's where it stops. Okay. Who's left? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I agree with everybody, you know, it's a family decision. That's really where it ends from a, you know, scientific purpose end of it. It would be interesting to see, right. Because you, you watch a guy that uh, was elite at what he did um, was incredibly smart coming, coming out of it, doing endorsement deals and movies and all of that. And then, you know, his life just takes a, really bizarre turn not just with the murder trial but then stealing back his own memorabilia and like oh, there was so many just weird things after that that, that you know makes you make, 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 right because <laughs> you're kind of curious um you know what it is they would find but yeah at the end of the day it's a family decision so you know that that's where it ends but you know again from a science standpoint it, it would have been interesting yeah, sure would have. All right, let me make a point out here. I pretty much let a lot of things on the chat come up here. Every now and then, though, if I think the sensitivity of the subject does not blend in with what we're doing and individuals are not comfortable answering it, they can look at it and make their own personal decision. It's not like I don't want to go ahead and put them up because I believe that without you people out without our following and our subscribers and everything, we appreciate everything you do. So I do apologize if not everything gets up there. I always say I'll make an attempt to try to go ahead and do it, but at times it just doesn't work out. Jeremy, anything you want to add to it? Yeah, I'm going to answer it real easy. The easiest answer, it's already been done. It's owners. You had Al Davis, once he was senile and gone, now you got his son. you got Jerry Jones. You've had Jerry... Uh, Dan Snyder, you got the owner of the Miami Dolphins who made big mistakes, and you also have David Tepper. There, there's your answer. It's owner. Okay. Okay. All right. I just so I just want to put it out there while I'll do everything in my power to get things up every once in a while. But the guest to me and our analysts are, are you know, it was important that we appreciate the participation that we can to make sure that everybody knows that we are able to communicate in a way that uh, we try to be fair all the way around. But I don't have a problem putting dog check to that, Scott. All right, Joshua, door. Dog check is an innocent thing that these guys have going between them. So I'll love dog check. I won't say that everybody has to figure out what the heck it is, but dog check anyways. I can do that one or two, three times. It's not a big deal. So. <laughs> But that said, amen, everybody, for understanding what we're trying to do. We just wanted to try to be fair and do what's right for the whole everybody itself. Without any further delay, let's go out there and talk about the Michigan Wolverines football team. We'll be under probation, okay, for three years and we'll face other penalties from the NCAA due to violations during the COVID-19 dead period. Michigan will have to pay a fine, uh, face recruiting restrictions after coming to an agreement with the NCAA's enforcement staff. Now, bear in mind, okay, there is no bowl games included in this. You think the NCAA would be dumb enough to leave them out of that? No. I mean, first of all, I think there are too many of them in the first place. So if you can get the Wolverines there, so be it. So I'm going to ask everybody this, okay? It's a two-part question. Were they too lenient or were they too harsh? Start off with Bo. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's um, it's a situation where most that coaching staff's gone at this point, right? So, I mean, it's um, going to be a fine. Huh? There's going to be some restrictions, but they're not kept out of bowls. So, I mean, ultimately, it's slap on the wrist, no big deal. Um, that being said. I don't think they really did anything that was that abnormal. So I, I don't really have a problem with it not being harsher punishment. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. What about you, Mel? 
uh, you know, I, I don't even know what the rules are anymore, to be honest with you. I mean, the lines are so blurred as far as what you can do and what you can't do. I, I think it's ridiculous. I mean, I think the whole thing that they went through last year was ridiculous with, uh, you know, with the way the recruiting is now. I mean, if you can, if you can guy, give that guy that, that, that money handshake, I mean, it doesn't really matter. If you can pay players, if you can have a collective that pays players to come to your school, what, what does all the other stuff matter as far as the time frame in which you can contact players and all that and bringing them on campus? Well, why, why, why does that matter? I don't, I don't understand. So I'm really confused about what the rules are in college football. When right. you, what, what is, a, what is permissible and what's not permissible. Right. That's true. That's the one, that's the one thing is there's no co uh, consistency, but I'll tell you one thing that is, that we can't lose sight of Jim Harbaugh got out at the right time. That's for sure. Well, he knew, you know, and he had already done everything that he could go ahead and do. So now the you know, only thing left for Jim Harbaugh is a Super Bowl. But that said, okay, we got, we'll go over to Jeremy. Well, Harbaugh let, pulled a Jim Carroll, went ahead and left before the stuff happened. So Michigan, they didn't want to punish the players quite as much. So therefore, they're going to get slapped with probably like what five scholarships reduced or 10. Is it, Do you know, right. for sure it's that's all it is. It is a slap on the wrist, but the, the violations of the recruiting practices in 2020, he bought a recruit, a hamburger. Yeah, right. And then he texted him during the no contact period. That was it. So that's what all this is about. This has nothing to do with the stealing sign stuff. All of that is squashed. Yep. I agree. And, and the real, real, still pending. Yeah, go ahead. I'll, I'll segue over to you. All right, who we got left? Travis and. Well, no, I just wanted to confirm. I thought the sign stealing thing was the investigation was still pending. I don't. I yeah, don't think that one I believe that. still is. It could be, but it, it looks like is you know, he did a. Big Ten sanction suspension prior to the scene doesn't being over. Okay. And I think he did that in lieu of anything coming back on Michigan. Hmm. Well, yeah, it's going to so, come back. I mean, yeah. So, yeah, you know, what I read, I think it was still pending. I it guess, is pending. Right. So, it his investigation, pending. his his punishment and, their, and the school's punishment, I guess, are different. It was like a no known he was not going to be here in either case. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I think but, it ultimately ends up just being another fine. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be another slap on the wrist at the end of at the end of all of this. We know what's going to happen. I mean, we've always known what was going to happen. What they wanted to do overall was punish Jim, and that was never going to happen because I mean, small time cops got small time power. I don't know what to tell you, um, <laughs> but <laughs> but but overall, like yeah, to to uh, to uh, what Jeremy's point, uh, it, this was a small infraction overall, like. It, the texting during the dead period, the buying of someone a, a hamburger, uh, and I think the biggest part of it was just allowing someone to look at the virtual, the, to look at the on-field activities virtually, so like via Zoom or, or whatever, something along those lines. That might have been the biggest part of it, and it's even then that still wasn't a huge infraction. So this was, you know, this is a parking ticket, and that's kind of what it is. All right, so let, let's go to the chat room a little bit. Okay, uh, Rocket Scientists, we can't do this. We'll do a Panthers update for that matter. They are down 2-1. The Red Wings are trailing 3-2 to two, the Montreal Canadiens. I know it's a big night in the National Hockey League, so we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and go through some of these chats. I really like them. Question for Jeremy, can you send my regards to Ricky Blast at the next draft week? I don't know what it is, but okay. Uh, if I find out who you mean, Absolutely, because I don't know of a blast in the draft. Okay. All right, let's go to this next one here. And I, I really like this one. We've got Harbaugh pulled off at Pete Carroll. Well, yeah, do you want to? I think that's, that's a valid that's one. Yeah, I mean, I that's pretty much what he did. That came into the chat. He pulled a Pete Carroll. He left before the sanctions came, so he didn't have to deal with it. All right, so here, rocket scientist wants to get win, win yeah. an Addy and then bounce. Win. <laughs> rocket scientist wants to clarify the old dog check. So you know, and he's got a dog. So if anybody's gonna come up with a dog in alley, it's, it's this guy from Urban Dictionary. Dog check when one tells someone to do the right thing away, away, and they do it. So all right, well, a little clarification on his standpoint. Now, Jonathan Hydogs, 
J.J. McCarthy is the next Zach Wilson. You know what? I, I, I'm going to let the panel go ahead and answer this question, but I'll do that after the, the remaining crew talks about what we have with Michigan. All right, so keep that in mind. So who I have left now? We got Travis. Yeah, yeah, Coach Bono. You know, the, 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 right, the, ahead, great, the great thing about being last in this group is that there's really not never much uh, meat left on the bone. But, uh, well, don't worry. I'll make sure there's plenty of meat on the bone. No, no, it's all good. All I'd say, the only thing I'll add is at least they won it all. You know, yeah. at least they won the dang thing. I mean, you know, the the sanctions, whatever they were going to be, fair, unfair, whatever, uh, justified or not, they were they were going to come. At least, at least they won the damn thing. Right. That's, I love it. I love it. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. So yeah. if, you, if you're gonna cheat, if you're gonna have a bounty, you better win the championship. I like it. Thing, right? Like if you're gonna cheat, you better win. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Hey, listen. With all, with, with all due respect, Harbaugh served all the suspensions he had to serve. So, and that's what got Sharon Moore hired as a head coach. I mean, he guy proved he could coach. Well, and I'm, I'm mean, gonna, they were I'm gonna imposed though. They were self-imposed suspensions it's not like they were mandated down i mean the, the first three games he just decided they would do it right essentially admitting guilt like yeah we did the thing i'll just go ahead and take a couple of days off no big deal um it, it's not like he was getting suspended outright so it, that's why it's still pending right right it's well the last like, three the last like three i think came down didn't they what's that the last uh, the three games had... yeah Oops. so the last the last ones were you know, brought down to them, but it, they weren't done. So, uh, which is why it's still pending. There was potential that he would have been suspended for this entire next season had he stayed. Well, all the more reason why that puts that comment about being the next Pete Carroll in perspective. He knew it, took the pro job, and that was it. So now that he's gone, what were that? What else were they going to do except bury this thing and go on from there? Exactly. So has everybody asked him? Has everybody answered the Michigan question? Has everybody had their chance to talk about it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Just making sure. All right. Now let's go to the one I'm gonna, that was in the chat room. Sometimes it's hard for me to keep track because uh, you know what? I get so involved in the comments and I think a lot of them are so good. So with that said, I'm going to lead off with you this time, Coach Bono. And that's talk about the Zach Wilson question that he had out there. And JJ McCarthy, what do you think? Uh, I, I mean, I, I think uh, J.J. McCarthy's had an incredible collegiate career. He's won a lot yeah. of games. Uh, he's shown me much more uh, situational awareness, uh, in, you know, through his by his play at, at Michigan than, you know, what Zach Wilson did in college. Uh, at, you know, I – Look, with any of these guys, especially the quarterbacks, you never know what's going to happen. So, sure. you know, let's let's let them give him a chance to to prove himself and see what happens. Okay, that's fair. All right, we'll turn over to Bo. What do you think? Yeah, so I hadn't heard the Zach Wilson comparison. I have heard the comparison to Mac Jones. Okay, um, and that one, you know, that one could make sense. You, the biggest thing with JJ McCarthy is he wasn't asked to do a ton of things with Michigan. So, you know, basically, we don't really know how good he can be because he wasn't asked to do a lot of those things. Right. It was a run first offense. They asked him to throw when they needed to. He was able to deliver on those throws. He does throw a pretty nice ball. But as far as being able to run all of it, command everything that we don't know because the offense just didn't require it. So could he be a Mac Jones? Sure. Could he be far superior to that? Absolutely. We, and we're not going to know until he lands on an NFL roster. Okay. That's fair. Two great opinions. What about you, Mel? I think a lot of the time, a lot of times <clears throat> these, these, um, these scouts or the executives, I think they overthink stuff, you know, exact Wilson. I mean, if you looked at his, his tape, he wasn't a number two overall pick. And I think they reach, I think you reach for a guy a, a lot, a lot more often in the draft and you try to make somebody into something that they're not, and then you end up being upset when he's not what you thought he would be. He is who he is. Now, I'm not saying that J.J. McCarthy 
is Zach Wilson, but we don't really know, like Bo, like Bo alluded to, we don't really know what he can be because really Michigan plays predict plays you know Big Ten football from the 1970s and 1980s. You know, they're going to run on first down, second down, and maybe even third down as well, and just pass, like Bo says, when when necessary. So he doesn't – he's not – the NFL game has gone away from that type of offense and has gone to a more passing-oriented game. So we really don't know what he's capable of doing, and we'll just have to wait and see. I would hope that he's not, uh, you know, Zach Wilson. But if he gets drafted in the right slot, then there won't be so much pressure on him uh, to succeed early because now teams don't have patience with these players anymore. They want to throw them out there in the fire and they get their confidence shattered. And then, it, and it's very difficult for them to re- rebound from that. And I think with him, you know, a lot of it's going to be fit. You know, mm-hmm. if he went to a team that throws the ball a lot, he's going to be in trouble. It's going to be difficult for him. Now, if he went to a team like, you know, the Ravens or, uh, you know, a team that's a more of a, a runoff, you know, with Tennessee, how they used to be. Uh, I don't know how they're going to be now, but when Vrabel was there, they're more running or run oriented team. Uh, you know, I, the Patriots, I don't know what they're going to be, you know, with the new coach there, maybe they're going to be more, more run oriented, but, you know, I thought Mac Jones was a, a good quarterback. I just think he got put in a bad position and now he's got a label on him and, you know, he may never get an opportunity to rebound from this just because, you know, the situation that a coach put him in, and it's uh, very unfortunate. Yeah. Right, we got Travis, and then <coughs> finish the topic. What do you think, Travis? Yeah, I don't think it's a great comparison. Um, and, and, and I hadn't heard it, to be clear. So it could just be a random question, or it could be a general question of J.J. McCarthy. Is J.J. McCarthy the next guy to be overdrafted? Uh, maybe it just could have been said in a different way or something along those lines. So to, to give the commenter, you know, a, a – different perspective that's fine um but overall like zach wilson to mel's point didn't have the tape that jj mccarthy has and it's not to say jj mccarthy has all these highlight throws and all these opportunities because he was in this you know pro style offense that generally tried to you know be balanced and run the ball more often than not uh nevertheless zach had a lot of bad tape whereas uh JJ doesn't necessarily, he just has limited opportunities of showing off his arm strength or showing off the ability to make certain throws. So you may have to go through a full season of, you know, of throws to get to maybe something that you would have seen from Zach Wilson in, you know, four or five games. So I can understand that overall piece, but at the end of all of it, if you're going to put him in that right fit, in that kind of Shanahan offense, uh, something that's going to be balanced, you're going to scheme guys open, it's going to be a pro-style offense, things that we've seen from J.J. McCarthy in college already, then you would have to assume that he's going to project to at least be an average NFL starter, and that's more than we can say for Zach Wilson right now. Good points. Let me, you know what, Jeremy, before I turn over to you, here's what's going to have to happen. Like Mel, all you guys are saying, okay, and he has to be in the right situation, J.J. McCarthy, but I do believe in my mind, and I really do believe it, that a change of scenery for Zach Wilson is all it's going to need. Playing in New York, they've gone through how many top-tier draft quarterbacks, and none of them have worked out. Somehow, some way, you know, I do believe Zach Wilson gets it figured out later, just not in New York. All right, Jeremy, go ahead. Well, I'm going to embrace the side that these guys wanted. Number one, J.J. McCarthy can't be the next Zach Wilson because he never banged any of his play. Uh, his co- oh, play, play, teammates' moms. Number two, <laughs> number two, Zach Wilson has a great long ball, but he was never that accurate in college. The difference is at the beginning of the season when Michigan was struggling to run the ball and JJ was throwing it 35 to 40 times a game, he was completing 72% of his passes and averaging 21.2 yards per pass. That is huge. He was leading the NCAA for eight straight weeks because of the beginning of the season in yardage and completion percentage. What happened is when Jim Harbaugh couldn't be on the sidelines, the play calling couldn't be the same. Sharon Moore is more of a running back slash offensive coordinator. So therefore, they kind of hid J.J. McCarthy behind the running game until they got to Ohio State in the playoffs. Okay, let's go to the chat room. I'm going to go and put a few up myself. Yeah, well, Josh, I'm glad you're looking for the sports exchange tomorrow. We'll, we'll be talking a little bit of hockey tomorrow night. That's one of the reasons he wants to come on. 
So, but we have some really good topic stories that we're going to go out there <coughs> and mention tomorrow night to give everybody a basic preview. So, and in terms of now, here's a guy that has it straight here. All right, I think my crew can appreciate this. Scotty runs a tight ship on Tuesday. I think that would be music to everybody in this crew, right? So, uh, okay, let's go. Motor set. Ad mouth declares for the NFL draft. Yeah, now, I'm not sure what position I'd be able to declare with this body being busted up. Can you throw the picks? Get it all? Yeah, cause I got a good spiral up my 61 year old body. Question is, if, uh, will it be an accurate throw? All right, rocket scientist. Yeah. I think spiral yeah. fractures don't count. Spiral fractures. <laughs> what? Are you crazy? Really? You mentioned that. Yeah, right. I couldn't help it. <laughs> no, I know you couldn't. That's why I let you say it. Okay, I think he needs to have a more relaxed show. Look at Barstool Sports. They just bust all day and worth millions. Hey, rocket scientist, you know, I couldn't agree with you more. So I'll tell you what, I'll make a deal. I'll have a more relaxed show that when all you guys are in the chat room want to come in here and talk to these guys, hey, we'll put a we'll link in there if you all want to interact with us. That way, will the real ball busters stand up? All right. There we go. Because these guys like the word ball buster. I think it's a pretty interesting term. And we might even create a show of ball busters on here as well. You just never, never know. And we got a bunch of dandies out here willing to do it. Y'all are talking about the NFL. What will the Chiefs do with Rice getting arrested in their trash for the wide receiver room? You know what? I'm only going to let two people talk about it a little bit more. Jeremy and Bo, do you guys have any thoughts about what could happen in Kansas City? Uh, Kansas City needs to draft a wide receiver in the first round. Whoever's the best available at 32, they need to take. That's all there is to it. Whether it's Xavier Worthy, Troy Franklin, or Keon Coleman, they need somebody that can catch the ball, ball because Kadarius Tony is not it, and Rasheed Rice is probably going to see four to six game suspension for what he pulled. All right, Bo and Travis, you're welcome to answer this one if you want. Yeah, no, he he's definitely going to miss some time with the suspension. Um, not including uh, any potential jail time he faces, right? So, I mean, that that's still a real question mark in itself. So, um, but yeah, I mean, to your point, it, they got to get somebody that can catch the ball. Uh, I mean, there were so many drops last year, it trickled into Kelsey dropping, dropping balls he doesn't normally drop. So, yeah, they got to get some guys that are sure-handed or, uh, you know, maybe get them some extra stick em gloves. Like, I don't, I don't know what they need, but uh, they definitely need some competent receivers. Okay. All right, Travis, you want to? Uh, All right, Jeremy. Birthday. You know, he said they were dropping balls, but Kelsey did it. Kelsey was dropping balls because he dated a ball buster. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Wow. Oh, boy. I'm right. trying you, to avoid the Taylor. Yeah, you're starting to fit in with these guys really good. No wonder you got your own fan club with this group. All right. Travis, you want to mention something real quick? Uh, I mean, as far as Rice is concerned, I mean, he's going to be suspended. I don't, I don't think that's much of an argument that I'm a little bit farther down than a lot of other people. Uh, I've heard people say that he's may get you know four to six games. I'm actually of the belief that he's going to get somewhere closer to two to three, um, and that's just my personal opinion, not based on anything that I know, just based on just hey, I'm just evaluating what actually happened in the accident, what he's going to eventually be charged with, and um and. That's because of that. He's a millionaire with millionaire attorneys. There were no actual deaths as far as the accident was concerned. It was reckless. It was stupid. It was just idiotic. But at the end of the day, what did happen in the accident matters, or it seems to matter to the NFL. Um, so they're going to have to suspend them for something. But I just have the doubts after everything said and done. After they're going to originally make it four to six, he's probably going to appeal it, and it's going to be knocked down to two to three just to make sure everybody's kind of covered in CYA. Um, that's how this thing kind of normally works out. That's kind of my prediction. You, and you think uh, you think he appeals it, or you think he just uh, accepts that thing? I think because, he's absolutely because appealed. it was extraordinarily dumb. It was abs it was absolutely dumb. But when it happened, I said it to a group of my friends in a private chat. I'm like, mm -mm. if he walked away from the scene of the accident, there's zero percent chance that there wasn't drugs or, or alcohol involved because they thought that that was the better option than being like they literally had to sit there and think about think this through. All right, should I just take the hit? Ooh, mm -mm. I'd rather them think that I was drinking or think that I had drugs than them know that I was drinking and know that I have drugs. At least I can come back a few days later, and that's exactly how it seemed to work out. So 
mm -mm. I I think I he would be dumb not to appeal it because this is kind of how everything does. The NFL knows that they can't realistically suspend them for four to six without some, there being something serious going on with the outcome of the accident. Whereas he would be dumb from a millionaire perspective with an attorney to not go through the right process and appeal it. Like basically everybody's gonna CYA public in the in you know in the court of public they kind of have to just do what they're supposed to do and everybody plays their roles. So I see the Chiefs do I, I do see them drafting someone. I don't know if it's at the start of the second round, end of the first, or if it's you know in one of the later rounds, just because you can get a starting wide receiver up to the you know end of the third round, early fourth round in this draft is so deep. So. All right, Coach Bono and Mel, do you have anything you want to add about this? No, the, the only thing I I would say is unfortunate. Now the, the league's going to want to want to they want to suspend them because it's a bad look and. Uh, that's the unfortunate part about it is it, it perpetuates that stereotype, which is, you know, these guys, you know, are, are, are rough, rough rod and, and, you know, they're out doing dumb things and that's really the opposite. Yeah. Does it happen? Yes, it does. It happens all across society. The majority of the players in the NFL though, are, are good pros. You know, they do their work, they go home, you know, they, uh, they have families. They're, you know, they're they're good pros, and this is a it's a bad look. You know, it's like how many times does it have to happen? So, right. you know, they it can't go unchecked. It can't go un, unpunished because it sets a bad precedent if they do. And I mean, you know, they, they made that mistake one time with the Ray Rice deal, right? They they made that mistake, and uh, you know, I, you know. We'll just have to see how it plays out. Fortunately, you know, you know, as as Travis mentioned, fortunately, no one was seriously hurt. You know, but right. that was just by the grace of God. Okay, Mel, anything you want to add to this? Oh, but mute, taking mute yeah. off would not turn me into a. Uh, lip I'm sorry about that. As a father, I, you know, I think the league has to come down pretty hard on them, to be honest with you. I really do, because this is just stupid. I mean, and they walked away, which is that was you know, another thing that was stupid. You know, and I thank God every day. And, you know, when I was drafted by the Broncos, I remember my dad hated motorcycles. And the first thing I was going to do was get a motorcycle. I was going to get the fastest one for two, you know, Ninja 900. And thank God I didn't make the team because God knew that if I would have got that motorcycle, I would have killed myself. And sometimes young people, you know, you think you're 10 foot tall and bulletproof and, and you just don't understand. I mean, why are you going 120 miles an hour on the freeway? I know you can. I know it's the car can do that because it's got that on the on the speedometer. But that doesn't mean that you should be doing it. Right. And yeah, just because bad things didn't happen doesn't mean that bad things couldn't have happened. And I think the NFL right. has to look at worst case scenario. What could have happened? Look what happened with the kid down there in Las Vegas. You know, he's in jail right now. He killed somebody and their pet. You know, that's right. what could happen. That's the worst case scenario that a whole bunch of people could be killed. Now, the next couple of years, he's going to be playing for these folks to be, to pay because they're suing him now and they're going to get money. They're going to get paid. So his next few his next few years worth of checks are going to be going to all those folks that he ran into on the freeway. It's just it's when I saw it, it's just I just couldn't believe it. I mean, it's just so silly. I mean, you just got to be smarter than that. And, you know, Kansas City, I think. Even, even if this didn't happen, I think they sh still should have been looking at drafting a wide receiver because that was a position of need, you know, a position that they desperately needed somebody to step up. Now he came on later on in the season, but I can't say that he's going to he's going to have any, you know, how much availability he's going to have this coming season. Okay, Candy, I want you to read Robert Wardell's quote here that I think this uh, this show, and then you could go out there and give us a station break. <laughs> Which this one? No, the one about our show. This one. I think this is a show I enjoy. Maybe sometimes my humor does not go over, but I enjoy the discussions. They get used to me. I watch a lot of the shows, Philly Prime, all of Bo's looking forward to. Okay, very good. So that gives you a Robert's perspective. Now you can give us a station break. So, if you see that red subscribe button, please hit it, share us, like us with all your friends, family. 
Yes, if you're a subscriber, we appreciate you. We want you to share it with everybody else. Go to our website, www.southfloridatribune.com. You can see the writings of George Acorn, Scott, Jeremy. They all write. I take pictures. Um, let's see. You can hear us on iHeartRadio, Google, Apple Podcast, wherever you get your podcast, CastBox, Geo7, you name it, we're there. If you want to advertise or if you want to, to sponsor a show, call Scott, 954-304-4941. Then there is a thing that Scott went out and did. He wrote a book, Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. It is available Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Kindle. It is now available also on Apple Books and Google Books. So go get your copy today. Oh, I love Orlando Escribano Jr. You can tell he's one of my Lion fans. Yeah. All right, Candy, thank you very much. All right, first of all, I want to thank everybody for participating so far. And we're going to go on to the next topic after I go through some of the chats. All right, I know Joshua Dorr, I like the show too, but it would be nice to have some more humor. Sports Exchange enjoys the humor more. Okay, well, you know what? I can appreciate that feedback. Okay, you probably allowed to have a few more dog checks there than you normally would here. Although I'm warming up to them a little bit because it's an innocent, harmless comment. So I don't mind putting a dog check up there. Let's see if you guys come up with one with a uh, cat check. Because, you know, I happen to go out there and tell you that cats are. Scott, I, I love your takes, but you're wrong. Okay, well, that's okay. John, I have no problem with people telling me I'm wrong. Everybody has opinions, and I have no problem putting that out there. If you're saying I'm wrong about Zach Wilson, you won't be the first one that I've ever said it, and, we'll, and I'll be darned if you're the last one. Okay, Orlando Escribano, scouts are saying Michigan players, every couple of years, uh, had an understanding pro ball, especially O-line. Okay. And now Candy Evelyn giving us a Red Wings update, 3-3 three, three in the third. Welcome to the chat, Orlando. Thank you very much. You guys are all teammates. Scott? To throw over them mountains. Yeah, it depends on what you might throw over there. Smokes and Jeremy likes the ball bug. See all these new terms we get here. It's pretty interesting stuff. Ball bust, here we come. Let's see if somebody's got, got enough, is willing to go out there and show their face and you do that ball bust. I'll find a good place to put that show. I promise you. I don't know where, but I got ideas. Okay. So with that said, you need more uh, ball busters on Tuesday. All right. Well, here we are on Tuesday. If you want to get ball, you got to check out Coast to Coast School, Taylor Swift. All right, let's keep going. Blah, blah, blah. Division champs. If this holds, okay, Joshua Dorr. All right, that's talking about the Panthers. Question for Scott. Do you know how to make a sandwich? If so, what is your favorite type? Oh, come on, rocket scientist. Peanut butter and jelly is the way I go. Every now and then, I'll get the guts to make a ham and cheese sandwich. So, okay. So there we go. I, everybody likes to talk about my cooking or lack thereof it. So. I, I can live with all that. Good, all this incredible love here. Let's keep it going. We At the rate we're going, we might break some records, guys, in the chat room. So look at this. All that momentum. All right. And let's keep it going here before I go on to my next topic, which is about to be here any second. Uh, okay, George. Let's see. We have George Icorn NHL up there. Yeah, we got that one, George. Thanks. I know you, you got that out there again. All hosts see our chat. Let's be real. Give us our take. Yeah, they can see them, all right? If they don't like what you're going to say, there's majority. Some of those things aren't going to get up there, just so you know. But that's a good point. You know, we try to make sure we stay on top of it. Next topic, it appears that USC quarterback Caleb Williams will be the number one pick in the draft. But the question is, okay, well, is he the best quarterback in the draft? You know what, Travis, I'm going to start with you. That's a hard one. He has the ability to be. And, I mean, obviously, he's the first. He, he's the projected, heavily, widely projected number one pick in the draft. So he obviously has the ability. Like, he can make throws. He can he can put teams on his back and make throws that, are, that well, that some guys in the NFL can't make. Like, this, most of the guys in this draft class can't make. He just didn't do enough in my opinion to like slam the door shut and letting everybody say he is a generational type quarterback or that he's um you know one of those guys who's just you you have to have it no matter what like in all draft classes but at the end of the day 
he's probably going to be your best pick, especially the way that the NFL is ran these days with these college offenses, um, you know, with the spread you know, kind of infu- being infused into the NFL these days. He's one of the few guys I can say that truly, that truly could put a team on his back on any given play or any given day and actually win the game on his own, a la Josh Allen, a la Patrick Mahomes. And I'm not obviously not saying he's one of those guys, but he does have some of those similar skill sets and his ability to take over a game. So I kind of have to go with it based on that because he's probably going to go to a very, very bad Bears team. (laughs) All right, Mr. Salute. Jeremy, what do you think? All right. Number one, high smoking dad. I see you're in the building. Uh, Best, most intangibles and highest ceiling is Caleb Williams. Is he going to be the best QB in this draft his rookie year? Probably not, because I don't think he's going to the right coaching scheme to fit him. I don't think Chicago does well with their quarterbacks. They haven't. They have yet. How many 4,000-yard quarterbacks have the Chicago Bears ever had? Well, I'll tell you what, if you look at Jonathan Hyde's comments. Zero. If you, if you look I, at John- yeah, I know the Bears are going to ruin Caleb, and I agree. They're <laughs> just like they ruined Justin. I mean, if you look at it, Justin, he never had a year where he threw for better than sixty three percent. And and yeah, uh, Jay Cutler, thirty eight hundred and forty five yards is their best QB. Guess how many thirty touchdown QBs they've had in their entire history? Zero. Right. They do not do not do well developing QBs. They kept the same coach, and I think that was a bad, big, big mistake because with the talent they added on that defense and as good as that defense played, they should have won more than seven games. They should have been a 9-10 to 10 win team. Hmm. Hell, they should have beat Detroit the first time they played them in Detroit, but they gave up 19 points in the fourth quarter. Do you, do you I feel better? That, that you feel better, Jeremy? You know about that offense. That offense, all they had to score was a field goal, and they'd win that damn game. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, that's an animated Jeremy Ball, Rick. All right, Bo. <laughs> uh, okay, so for me, yeah, sure. Uh, no, I don't think uh, I, I don't think he's necessarily the best one. He He probably is the – you know, the number one overall pick. He definitely has a lot of upside. Uh, If you're going with throwing ability, like the chat said, I do like the way that Penix throws the ball better, but uh, he throws the prettiest ball. The thing for Penix is he isn't mobile the way the other guys are. So he needs to land in a situation like Tom Brady, where their offensive line was amazing, right? That's what he needs because he doesn't have – that elusive ability, that dual threat action that really the rest of the, you know, the rest of the lineup does. Um, I think the ceiling for him is incredibly high. Uh, to Jeremy's point, I think he's going into a situation where they're not great at developing talent. Uh, they're going to expect him to go out there immediately and play hero ball. So um, I, I hope they do something with that offensive line, because even if they get him some more weapons, it won't matter if he's on the ground. I mean, yeah, they even because of cap room, they let their best interior O lineman go. I know. Cody Whitehair was their best rated interior O lineman, and they let him walk. And everybody says, oh, they got to go wide receiver with their second first round pick. No, they got to go O line. Yeah. They should take whoever the best interior O lineman is, regardless of position, and take him early because otherwise, Caleb Williams is going to get ruined. Yeah, well, okay. I mean, I think they're just taking the standpoint of it, it, they they misread it. it. It's not O line. It's O line. Yeah, like oh, we should have we should have got some of that. <laughs> I actually, I, I think I think they're going to trade back from that number nine spot, though. Uh, like I, I do believe that they are going to trade back, and you can get interior O line and as early as I mean, sorry, as late as like the third and fourth round historically. Um, so you can, if you load up on a multiple day two or day three picks, then you can rebuild that line all through the draft for cheap. Okay. You know what? And everything they made, they don't have a pick past the fifth round. Currently. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's, yeah. let's turn, let's turn this over to coach Bono Mel follows. All right. 
Man, just some really good dialogue there. I appreciate everything everybody said, man. I, I just always think that, I mean, I, first of all, with the player, I liked the, I liked the uh, 2022 version of Caleb Williams a lot better than the 2023 version. And, and there's a lot of, you know, a lot of things that go into that. Um, I think he's an incredibly talented guy. End of, end of story, it's a team game. You know, like as the, everybody's mentioned, if he goes to the Bears, they better, you know, he's not going to be able to carry the whole team on his back. You know, he'll get hurt. And uh, it, it's just your his success. And like everybody else is predictive on so many, so many factors. You know, it, it's, uh, you know, there's no sure things. That's the only that's the only sure thing about the National Football League is that there's no sure things and there are no guarantees. And uh, it'll be like, oh, everything, it's it's why we watch it, to see what happens. You know, because until they show us that they can do it, they can't do it. Yeah. All right. No. Yeah, I'm like Coach. I like the 2022 version of him better as well. I think 2022, if he was able to come out, he would have definitely, he, he definitely was the number one pick. Uh, I think he. Uh, I think there was a lot of uh, regression in his play in 2023. You know, USC. I mean, they're not devoid of talent now. I mean, come on now, that's USC, and this is Lincoln Riley. Riley, you know, everybody's real high on him. He's an offensive coach. He's an offensive guru, and they did not do very well offensively, in my opinion. I mean, they took a step backwards offensively. Um, I, I, I like. I think the best quarterback. I really think it's going to be Michael Penix Jr. Now, granted, both of these guys have played a lot of football, but Michael Penix Jr. has overcome it quite a bit. And, you know, I know they talk about his mobility. I mean, when he was in Indiana, he was running the football. That's why he got hurt, because he was running the football so much. And he had to run for his life over there in Indiana. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, Indiana has never played very good football uh, as part of the Big Ten. And he did well over there. I mean, he was the reason why I was watching Indiana football, to be honest with you. And then I saw he went over to, he went over to Washington, and he's, he still put up big numbers. I think he reads the field better than Caleb. I think he stays in the pocket. I think he, you know, he trusts what he sees. I think he, he, you know, he's able to read the field well. And I think he's going to fall to a good situation for himself. And I think that's going to be the difference between him and Caleb where they're going to, he's going to go somewhere where there's a need, many needs. Uh, but one of the needs that they have is quarterback, obviously, because that's the most important position. Uh, but there's so many other needs there. There's so many other things that, things that are broken with that franchise that it's going to be very difficult for him. And I think Michael Penix Jr. is just going to fall to a place that's going to be ideal for him. He may get an opportunity to sit for a minute and continue to develop. And I think he's going to be a real good quarterback because I like I like his demeanor. Uh, I like the way he stands in the pocket. I like the way he delivers the ball. You know, I don't like that left hand necessarily, but you know, I could get used to that ball coming the other way like that. But other than that, I mean, he's everything that you want in a quarterback. Yeah, the only thing I'll say about Caleb Williams is, number one, you're looking at him this year based on potential, but, yeah, you, you guys have already – he needs a better offensive line, needs more offensive weapons, and I think, without a doubt, a coaching change would have been the best thing for him. Now you have potentially a lame duck coach with him for one year, then he's going to have to adapt. So if you're going to change the coach, you change the quarterback. Justin Fields – Obviously, it was time for him to move on, but I think Chicago may end up regretting that one down the road. I really do. Justin Fields is going to be the beneficiary of a, of a fresh start. Two more things I want to get to, and then we're going to let Mel talk about some of the events that are going to take place in Detroit. Next, the NFL raises the standard for how much Pardon me? Okay. Well, if, I, if, if I could answer a question here for Robert, yeah, um, go ahead. He uh, he says Russell says he paved the way for these guys. Uh, I don't know if you saw the uh, the the article or not, but um, you know I, I think that's actually incredibly the way he said it. Um, it. It seemed really disrespectful to guys like Donovan McNabb who got left out of the comparison altogether. Uh, now Russell Wilson was a more efficient version. But uh, McNabb had a hell of a career. So, you know, it, having uh, having him left off of those lists and stuff, uh, it, it seemed kind of disrespectful to a guy that uh, absolutely balled out. Well, he says he paved the way for what guys? You mean what, for African-American quarterbacks? What, what? Exactly. 
What about uh, exactly. what about, what about what Warren about, Moon? Warren <laughs> Moon. What about uh, Michael uh, Vick? Well, no. So he was talking about getting Doug Williams. <laughs> he was talking about getting to Super Bowls and stuff like that. And it's like, okay, well, I mean, McNabb. Doug Williams. Them. Doug, exactly. Doug so Williams. He, he does mention oh, Doug oh, Williams, oh. right? As uh, oh, previous to him, oh, the only one that's won, right? Oh, okay. Well, he paved the way for Patrick Mahomes. Okay. That, that's you. that's what he's. Yes. There we go. <laughs> Okay. And, I think wow. Patrick would have figured it out without, <laughs> without Russell. Or doesn't run Russell well. wasn't the reason why they won that Super Bowl. I mean, let's truth be truth be told. No, the defense killed it. <laughs> I mean, he was a part of it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he was a part of it, a big part of it. But he wasn't the reason. He wasn't the horse that pulled the buggy. That defense was. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, that's why there's a defensive MVP that year, right? For the Super Bowl. <laughs> Okay. All right. Let's talk about some safety. All right. The NFL raises a standard for the helmet performance as five new models achieve record high testing results. Well, you know what? This is something that we always talk about player safety. And we have a couple more things I want to get to. So everybody can go ahead and say what you've got to say. But bear in mind, I want to make sure that there are certain topics that we want to give equal amount of time. All right. We'll start off with Coach Bono. Let's talk yeah. about the helmet performance well i think you know it's a great it's it's great news uh you know those companies that are, are very that's a very competitive industry you know you're it's getting a lot of attention and uh you know the bar is getting raised every year and i hope that uh and expect that it will continue to get raised it's a it's a good it's good all the way around for the game okay mel yeah i mean I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that's great. Um, you know, you go back, you know, I was looking at, you know, old clips of OJ and that helmet he had, and you're like, boy, we've come a long ways, right? Uh, you know, I was looking at clips of my dad when he was playing in the helmet he had, the face mask. I mean, these guys didn't even have face masks. You get your hand in there and everything. So, yeah, the helmet and the face mask have come a long way. Obviously, they need to keep improving on it uh, so they can limit the number of concussions that these players are sustaining. All right, Paul. Yeah, actually, uh, a good buddy of mine is uh, a rep for Rydell. So I was chatting with him about a week ago that uh, they're, one of the helmets that they brought out that's testing really well, uh, only the NFL has it. So your general consumer can't even uh, can't even get that thing yet. So it's um, pretty cool because I, I was trying to uh, see him. I was like, do you have one? Can we see this thing? He's like, no, nah, they're not letting it out of the building. <laughs> All, right. All right. Fair enough. Travis, you played the game. Oh man, um, it's this is a good situation. Obviously, like the NFL is doing everything that they can to curb, you know, the 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 exodus of young kids playing football, uh, discontinuing playing football. Um, at you know, yeah. you've, you've seen it happening across the, across the you know early and elementary, middle school, and pop Warner age kids, and why where it's they're leaning towards flag football when we all we obviously already have flag football as an Olympic sport now. Um, they're do the NFL is doing what they're supposed to do. They're trying to keep these lawsuits away. They're trying to do trying to proceed with player safety. They are doing this annually now uh, to, to try to get better helmets on and on and on to to allow these you know these athletes' brains to be able to <laughs> to, to be able to take this car this this daily car accident that we call football. Um, and they're doing a solid job at it, but it, it's weird because at the end of the day, it's trying our best not to feel like that we're playing the exact sport that we're playing. We're playing football, and we're just trying to hope that your brain doesn't remember we're playing football, and again, you're having this car accident 15 times in a game. All right, let's go to the chat room real quick. Orlando Escribano, the helmets look like they got an extra chromosome. I love Orlando, yeah. man. These comments. All right, yeah. All right, no, no, no. I see you all right, Jonathan Hydock. Put this one up there. How long will they wear the silly foam pads outside of the helmet for games? I God, know. I hope that never happens. Hmm. All right. Don't worry, Jeremy. You're, you're, you're left on this topic. Let me get the chat up here first. Okay, there you go. What do we got? Neanderthal slope forward look works nature as, as it right. Okay. Damn, Travis, would you like to switch homes? All right, good stuff. All right. Got homes and homes. All right, Jeremy, you have last word on the helmets. Uh, the helmets needed. 
I still think they need to look into what they used in college and high school sports to reduce concussions by over 40% over a three-year testing period with that product called Second Skull. It's like a skull cap to absorb the pressure on the head. The only problem that I heard is on the heavier set guys, they overheated a little bit. So maybe your old linemen and your defensive linemen couldn't wear it, but your linebackers and your skilled players and your quarterback could. Some, something like that probably would have prevented, well, maybe one or two of Tua's concussions that year. Well, last year in the NFL, the, all, they have three different versions of the helmets depending on the position group. So it's possible that they were already doing that last year. I'm just not sure of the specific types. No, I was talking about under the helmet. They have something that's called second skull. So you're talking about the, the protective part underneath. No, it, it actually is put on before you put the helmet. It's like a do rag. I got it. It looks like a do rag. Yes. Yeah, I was never one that liked that. Uh, yeah, it made me hot. I didn't like anything on my head. I just wanted head and hat. <laughs> okay, let's go to Jonathan Hydock. John, we mentioned this earlier, but I definitely want to get your comments up. Yeah, no, OJ did not donate his brain for CT research, subjective opinion. But they didn't say that this week on CTE SPN. So I'm just going to tell you. Yeah, that's, I like that. That's pretty good, actually. And okay, the frontal lobe looks so bad, though. All right, one more topic to get to. All right, Vikings. TJ Hawkinson wants NFL to look into low hits. All right, we'll start with you, Mel. Yeah. Um, you know, where are you going to hit the guys? It's unfortunate. You know, you can't hit them high, you can't hit them low. You know, guys are bigger, faster, stronger. If you're a slight built guy, where are you going to go? I mean, you got to go try to go for them ankles. And it's unfortunate because it's really that split second when the leg is in the ground in a bad position, when it's really planted in the ground and that defender hits him, uh, that the guy could get, you know, messed up like TJ did. And it's, it's unfortunate, but I don't know where you're supposed to hit these big guys. I mean, some of these guys are big. These tight ends are big and they're moving fast. And it's nothing but shoulder pads and knees. And I don't know what you're supposed to hit. And, you know, I, you know you, you're making a business decision at that at that point in time. I mean, you're going to either look real bad on television, uh, you're going to let him go by you and jump on his back, or you're going to try to take him out low. And you, you don't have many options. And if you want to keep your job and be able to get your check the next week, you're going to have to go in there and throw your hat in there and, and try to take this guy down. That's the only place that you can go. And, it, you know, sometimes there, there, I think there's some – places for a person to, you know, if a guy is up in the air and he's coming down, I, I understand. I mean, you know, that, those routes that they get, those little arrow routes in the flat, and you got that squat corner there and he's just sitting there and the guy just turns around and he had, doesn't have an opportunity to make a move. It's tough, man. I mean, they're, they're asking the defense to do so much now. And when you're out there playing, you don't want to be thinking. You just want to react because when you think, you blink, you miss. You know, he's gone or you get hurt. You just got to be able to go up, be out there, be able to go out there and play and react. And we ask, we put a lot on these defenders now. So I mean, sometimes the quarterbacks got to protect these players. You know, they got to, you know, don't throw that ball to them when the, you know, in the flat next squat corners there, or over the middle. You know, over the middle guys don't really get hit that much as like they used to. But you just, you know, sometimes it's got the onus has got to be on the quarterback to protect, protect the receivers. Okay, a couple comments in the chat room. We'll go over to Coach Bono next. Okay, surgeries are more advanced now. They'll be okay. All right, Red Wings. All Red Detroit Red Wings have tied against the Montreal Canadiens now four to four. They got the equalizer with three point three seconds left. Going to overtime. Yep, I understand that, Jeremy. With that AI not far off from cyber bombs. Okay, and for MetLife, feel first. All right, turn over to Coach Bono. What do you think about the low hits? Yeah, I mean it's not a it's not a new debate. It's not a new story. I mean, you know that's. Uh, that started, players started to, you know, I don't know, um, debate that as soon as the, the, the helmet, the helmet uh, hits became outlawed. You know, once that, you know, once uh, you couldn't hit anybody up high or, a, you know, risk of getting uh, penalized for that, you know, the targets came down. And unfortunately, in some certain situations, they'd go, you know, below or at the knee. And, um, you know, there's guys that have been been hurt with that, and you know, I think you ask mo a lot of players will, would say they'd rather get hit in the head and shoulder area than having their knees taken out. So, um, 
you know, but the, the helmet, the helmet stuff, you know, those all have like longer term repercussions and, um, you know, not to mention, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the all of the lawsuits that have come up with, you know, because of that. So I, I don't see the, you know, I don't see the, uh, I don't see the rules changing, you know, and, and like Mel said, where, where are you supposed to hit the guy? You know, there's, there's, right. There's only so many spots you can hit the guy now. Okay, good point. Sorry, we'll turn over to Travis. I scoffed when I read this the first time. <laughs> um, <laughs> as a defensive player, I'm like, my immediate reaction is, man, offensive guy would bring this up. No offense, no offense, Mel. But just that—that that was my—that was my honest knee-jerk reaction. So I'm like, man, y'all trying to put these defensive guys out of business? He, I mean, I'm a little guy. I'm a little DB at that. Like, so I'm—I'm I'm definitely an anchor biter. And we got this guy complaining about taking people's ankles out when I can't hit you high either. Um, it was a, it was a wild thing. It was a wild statement, but honestly, it was probably true. Uh, because what TJ said specifically was like, "Hey, man, this this put, this injury put me out nine months. I can't even train. I would have preferred to have a concussion." And he's like, "And I know a lot of NFL guys who simply would prefer to have concussions." And I'm like, "That's wild," because it's probably true. Like that no, was Larry, probably Larry that is true. He would go talk to the other defensive team and tell him to hit him hit him high. Don't take his knees out. Larry yeah. Fitzgerald actually said that. So to Coach Bono's point, yeah, or earlier talking about the lawsuits, that thing, that CTE thing, it just made everything go a little bit far right because they didn't have much of a choice with the lawsuits. So now it's like all about player safety, player safety, player safety, and by player safety they mean head, <laughs> and that's it, uh, point blank, period. Uh, but so now, if, if, unless you're going to take these guys out of that uniform, uh, out of these pads, and have them playing straight Aussie football where they don't have all those head injuries because they're playing without pads. You're going to have this situation. So at the end of the day, it's going to come down to, I don't know, 20 years, 30 years from now, however long in the future, maybe, maybe they'll have a real serious adult conversation and just say straight up, hey, man, this sport, you will have an increased risk of concussion. But because of that, we're paying you fill in the blank percentage more. Are you comfortable with that? If you are, welcome to the NFL. Like maybe just kind of have one of those kind of conversations. Okay, fair enough, Paul. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's tough. Like, I, I don't know what you're expecting, especially DBs, right? Like, I was a 185-pound corner, <laughs> uh, you know? So if you have some of these bigger guys, you have to make a business decision anyway, right? Because if you go high against a guy that has 50 pounds on you, it's not going to work out. Like, I broke a face mask off my helmet going high on a fullback once. I, the rest of the game, I went low because I'm not a moron. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just one of those. It, but now if you can't hit low, you can't hit high, you can't hip drop. So, I mean, a guy my size taking down, Derrick Henry, that's not going to work. If he's by you, you might as well just, uh, you know, walk to the sideline and be like, I guess they scored. Uh, mm -hmm. I, mean, I, I don't know what you expect defenses to do at this point. Um, is it unfortunate when guys get hurt? Sure but you can get hurt on any play. You can have non-contact injuries take you out at the knee. So, I mean, at some point you got to let these guys play football. Okay. Let's go to the chat room. Now I'll turn over to Jeremy real quick. We had some pretty good ones that came in while everybody was talking QBs. Let's go to this one here. QBs are cheating, running extra yards and then complain that they get hit on the sidelines. Okay. Let's see. Keep them going. Candy all the way through. Mahomes is a flag merchant. Okay. Keep going. People calling out boy if he's dirty. Bring out those tight ends for if he. All right. So this was the initial way we think of running back numbers. Going to be hard to stop guys like Henry. Now that's a good point. All right. All right, Jeremy. Okay, you got the last word on this. Well, number one, it wasn't iffy that they're complaining about. It was Kirby Joseph because he had three tight ends that he took out, and if you look. Everybody freeze frames it when he's falling down the thigh to the guy's knee. The guy's leg is fully planted. He's hitting him in the thigh, which is where smaller DBs are taught to hit somebody. Don't go high because they'll knock you down if they're a 260-pound tight end. Don't go for their ankles because they can just step out of it. Go for their legs. So that is what you're supposed to do. And the hip drop tackle, the way the letter of the rule is, they wrote it wrong. Because a true hip drop tackle is when you catch them from behind, you wrap them from the waist, and you drop your weight to your hips 
making them fall on you. It's a wrap and roll tackle that they're talking about by the letter of the rule, which is a textbook wrap up tackle. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay. You wrap them oh. and you roll over their extremities. I think it's ridiculous. We are this close from having flag NFL football. And once that happens, you're going to lose a lot of the old hardcore NFL fans because I hate the fact that we don't have on Mondays hardest hits of the NFL anymore. Jacked up. Well, the only thing I'm going to say here, and then I'm going to turn over to Mel Farr, is I covered the, the league in the 80s. And I'm going to tell you, they used to have two and three a day workouts. You'd be lucky to see anything that would sniff anything along the old line. And Coach Bono, we, you know, we kind of lived it right back then. Bo, probably you as well. So we all know on this panel, when you have two or three day workouts, how painful those are. All right. You know what? This is the time of the show. I'm going to turn it over to Mel Farr Jr. I'm going to do this because he's got an event for his father on April 24th. So you know what, Mel? The floor is all yours. You know, you're paying tribute to your dad, who's a hero in Metro Detroit. Let everybody know what this event is all about and promote it. The floor is yours. Yeah, so it all started out. My sister just wanted to do something small. And uh, we, we, we started talking to some guys up there in Detroit, and they had their own relationship with my dad, by a guy by the name of Rufus Bartell and uh, Reverend uh, Horace Sheffield. And they had their own relationship with my dad. I'm really appreciative of the relationship that they had with my dad and the vision that they have for what this event can be and is going to be. We want, uh, Initially, I was just trying to support my sister. And I just got on the call just to be, just to be, a, you know, just, just a supporter. And this thing has turned into something far more than I could have ever imagined. So, you know, we're trying to introduce him to a new generation, uh, introduce my dad to a new generation of young Detroiters, mm -hmm. and also reintroduce him to some Detroiters who may have forgotten about him and the accomplish, accomplishments uh, that he that he had during his lifetime. My dad was a true pioneer. Uh, in the in the automobile business, one of the first guys to uh, successfully go from the from the football from athletics to 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 business and and be extremely successful. You know, at one time, it, I think it was in 1998. You know, we were the largest African American business in the country, uh, not just automobile dealership or automobile franchise. Uh, we were on one of the, the largest black business in the country, and that was you know something that he was extremely proud of. So this here event, you know, because, you know, we know, you know, we have the showcases here in, in Georgia and we also have them up there in Michigan. It's going to give us an opportunity to continue to do that, to offer these opportunities for young kids, young high school seniors who did not receive a Division One scholarship. It'll give them the opportunity to uh, showcase their talents and skills in front of Division Two, II, Division Three, and NAIA schools and give them an opportunity to earn a, a scholarship right there on the spot. Uh, the camp is free for the players and it's also free for the coaches. We pay for the coaches for them to stay the night there. And, and you know, there's no fee for the players that, that attend the camp. Uh, the other thing we want to do is we, we're, you know, we want to get a street name for my dad in the city of Detroit. We also want to establish a curriculum there at one of the local universities in my dad's name and entrepreneurship uh, curriculum up there in Detroit. So the event is kind of a kickoff for all that. Uh, it's going to have um, – it's, going to, it's held at One Mike Detroit up there in Michigan, uh, uh, an establishment owned by Mike Epps and Reverend Sheffield. So we're going to have uh, food there. The, the, the NFL alumni is also going to have their chapter meeting there that day as well. And then they'll then they'll come over and, and mingle with the crowd. But uh, we're going to have uh, great food. Uh, my sister's going to have a 24 police piece collection that she's going to have on our fashion show. Obviously, the number 24 is my dad's number. So the reason that's the reason why it's going to be a 24 piece collection. And then we're also going to have a comedy show uh, that's going to be headlined by, uh, you know, local Detroiters that are, that are going to be taking part in the comedy show. So we look forward to hopefully, you know, having a lot of folks come out there and, and enjoying some good times, mixing and mingling. Uh, we're going to have some guest appearances there. Uh, we're going to have Mimi Faust from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. She's going to be there. Uh, Tommy Hearns is going to be there. We have a couple other special invited guests that are going to be there. So looking forward to having a good time up in the city. I don't get up there that often, but I'm looking forward to going back, and we're going to make this an annual thing. Very good. I really like that. So let's go ahead and go to the chat room real quick. I do want to mention a couple things about that, but you have some great 
chats here that are about your dad, Mel. You should see these. Grand Rapids loves it. Well, you know, loves your dad. So there you go. And uh, let's go to this one. Devin Bynum, that's awesome. God bless. So the reality of the situation is, Mel, you've got a lot of love up there. And let me let everybody know now that our coverage team up in Detroit right now, we're looking at JBL also be there. They'll be alongside of me. So don't feel too bad, Jeremy. JB has to deal with me, not you. You get it easy with Candy Ebling, and George Icorn will be there as well. So, you know, so JB Ellis, if you're watching and listening, you know what, my friend, you know, you get a chance to hang out with me, and that's no country club. <laughs> Ask Jeremy. He'll tell you it's more like a boot camp. So with that said, Jer I can't hear you, Jeremy. I said, oh, that's just fine, JB. He's a big softy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. He'll find out, but that's all right. We're going to have a lot of coverage up there. Now, where we're going to broadcast our shows, as anybody guessed, we'll probably be brought, <clears throat> we'll give you that information as we give you updates along the lines. One possible spot is the Black Rock Bar and Grill, the corporate headquarters. Otherwise, I have a feeling that the majority of our shows are going to be held downtown. Now, I'm only talking about the Tuesday night show, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You can rest assured it's probably downtown Detroit, most likely. And we're working on some of those details. We'll get them to you as soon as we get them. So with that said, Jeremy, since you're on the screen anyways, and Candy's putting up the links, why don't you let everybody know how they get a hold of you, Jeremy? Well, you can find me right here on the South Florida Tribune channel on Inside the Pigskin, Fire Up, Pundits, Pundits, and occasionally Professor in the Pupil. And anywhere else Scott needs me, you can find my writings on the SouthFloridaTribune.com. If you go to the headings under the Motor City Tribune heading, where you will find my name, Jeremy T. Ballrick, there, writing about the NFL and the Detroit Lions. You can also find me on my channel, where I go live eight times a week. I go every day at 11 a.m. with Lions Talk with Smoking Jeremy B. and Von Doom. You can also find me three nights a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 p.m., until the draft is over, we do Mock Draft Mondays, and Wednesday is the NFL Roundtable Talk. Friday is Lions Fan Cave Chat. And then you can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Snapchat. All at Smoke and Jeremy at the other three, but it's Jeremy Balrick on Facebook. You know, Jeremy, you got as big of a grocery list as I get when I get my groceries over at the Walmart. Uh, grocery store locally so that's okay uh but at least you know what let's put it to you this way about mr ball he's out yeah. there all right but that said both everybody know how they get old yeah uh yeah so you can find me on all the all the socials at football talk with bo uh of course you can find me here every tuesday night and of course uh my channel at football dash talk and roku tv five days a week okay off to travis you can find me on all the socials, Travis D. Holmes, as it states there. You can find my writings covering the Jacksonville Jaguars on BigCatCountry.com. Uh, you can find me, on, if you're interested in any Jaguars uh, podcast, then we have a podcast, the, the Duval Dive of Jaguars podcast, wherever you catch a podcast, every Friday at 11.30 a.m. And you can find me here, whether it's on the sports or whether it's on the inside the pigskin or the sports exchange or pundits, pundits, um, South Florida Tribune. I'm always going to be wherever they need me. So, again, as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me. Great job, Scott. Thank you, Travis. Appreciate it. Bo, did I get to you yet? Yep. Good. I'm glad we did. But anyway, football <laughs> talk with Bo. Subscribe to his YouTube channel anyways. This guy's a big asset. Orlando Escribano. I have to get this one up. Be sure to get a Coney in the deep dish. Hey, I'll be there long enough to do that, my friend. You can take that to the bank. All right. With that said, Jog's such a nice little kitty. Go Hawks. Okay. With that said, we got a coach on the way. And by the way, not only do we have Coach Bono out there, Coach Bono is helping us do what, Coach? Open an online store. Exactly. exactly. Awesome. We'll give you the details. Motor City, Mad Mouth, South Florida, to be getting his online store because of him. All right. So why don't you let everybody know where how they get a hold of you? I guarantee it'll be much, much less than Jeremy's than again. Yeah, mine's easy. You can find me right here on Tuesday nights, most uh, nights. Uh, 
and uh, on LinkedIn, that's the only social media platform I'm on by choice. And uh, outside of that, the uh, Thursday night mowing lead is going strong, and we've uh, we're, we're four weeks in a row right now. We're great. Can only imagine. You know what, Candy? Give us our information because we're going to end the show with Mel Farr Jr. Here's Candy. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. <laughs> so, if you want to sponsor this wonderful show, call or if you want to advertise, call Scott 954 304 4941. If you like to listen to podcasts and you're driving or you want to fall asleep, well, no, not fall asleep because you won't fall asleep to this. But if you want to listen to podcasts, you can find us on iHeartRadio, Google, Apple, Castbox, Spreaker, Spotify, Geo7. You name it, wherever you get your podcast, that's where we're, we're on. But most importantly, there's a red subscribe button. If you subscribe, great. But now tell all your friends, your family, anybody about our shows and about any of our panelists, their shows. Because we want you to also go find their shows and go listen and watch them as well. And then go to our website, www.SouthFloridaTribune.com, where we have some writers Let's see, Scott, you're one of them. Jeremy, you're one of them. I take pictures. They're up there. Go look at it. Go take a peek at it. If you have ideas for us, email us, selfwaretribune at gmail.com. We love you, and we're going to be at the draft, so we're looking for you. Come check us out. Come find us. And most importantly, well, not most importantly, but Scott wrote a book. Lessons from the Microphone, Tuning into the Enduring Wisdom of Visionary Leaders. It has a picture of Scott and young Muhammad Ali. It has a picture of Scott and Tommy Lasorda from quite a few years ago. But it also talks about how media has changed over the course of the last 40 years. And it's got some really interesting stories. Obviously, you know, Scott likes to talk. I mean, it's got a microphone on the cover, like you know. Go read some of his stories because he's got all kinds of great stories and lessons to be heard and learned. And back to you, Scott. Well done, well Katie. Well, I'm going to end the show with Mel Farr Jr. Mel, like I said, he has some great stuff going on there. And let everybody once again uh, find out how they get a hold of you, Mel. Go ahead. You can catch me on all the social media at Mel Farr Jr. That's uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, or X, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, and then, uh, you know, find out what we have going on. We're actually revamping our website. I got somebody working on that. I think it's going to be Melfar Superstar Foundation.org. Uh, I don't know if it's completed yet. She was finishing that up. But if you want to get the tickets, and I hope that everybody will come out and support this event. If you want to get tickets, go to Event Noir. That's Event Noir, N O I R E. And you can just search Event 24, or you're free to get, you know, free to reach out to me, and I can send you the link. And look forward to seeing everybody there. Hey Mel, before we go off air, let everybody know that you had an opportunity to be interviewed by some local TV stations, one of which was WXYZ TV. And I want to let everybody know tomorrow that I do have to have a, 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 a teleconference call with Dan, you know, Jeremiah of the NFL Network. Know. My good content for tomorrow's edition of the Green. But, you know, Mel, you were interviewed by some local television stations. So, why don't you give everybody an overview of what you ended up doing? Like I say, WXYZ and I go back to 1979. Yeah, we got a great team up there in Michigan. <clears throat> uh, we got a guy by the name of uh, Andre Ash <clears throat> and Rufus Bartell who have uh, been setting up our media arrangements. Uh, so, we've been on. We've been on Fox, and we've also been on uh, Mason in the Morning. Uh, I think it was 105.9. We were on his radio show, did a call-in, and then we did a call-in on – or excuse me, yeah, we did a um, uh, a feature on on Channel 7 uh, with a young lady. I forgot her name. What, what did I say her name was, Scott? I want to make Cliff, sure. Caroline Clifford, I think. Yeah, Miss Clifford, and uh, it, it was very, very nice. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've, they've been very supportive. And like I said, we've got a great team out there that's working real hard to get the word out about this event. And we're looking forward to people coming out there and supporting it because everything is going to go to support the next generation of leaders, you know, our youth in the city of Detroit. And that's what my dad was all about. We want to educate them and empower them and show them what is possible. 
Yeah, well done. So meanwhile, what a great show tonight. We'll give you our the specifics next week. So meanwhile, as Travis Holmes uh, evidently dropped off, looking forward to having Travis as part of our NFL draft coverage from Jacksonville. We're going to get it all sorted out. So on behalf of Travis Holmes, Melfar Jr., Bo, Jeremy Balrick, Coach Bono, and of course, Candy, our producer. This is Scott Morgan, Roth from Motor City Madmouth. Thanking you for joining us on this edition of Inside the Pigskin. Also, a special thank you for everybody in the chat room out there that participated. Orlando Escribano trying so hard to get Scott to Ron Burgundy, a FTP. Jeremy, do you, uh, I don't know who this is, but maybe. Uh, he is can... one of my guys from Motor City Kneecap Fighters page. Um, and FTP means um, F the Packers. Oh, okay. Yeah, I knew there wasn't a very good uh, adjective there. But Thanks, all right. Scott. Well, hey, listen, I only read it. I don't know. What you all set him up with the alley oop on that one. Very I, I don't know what the abbreviations are. I'm bad at that, besides the other things. There, so, there might know. have been a reason why I didn't put that one up there. Right? Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't know so what that TP was. All I know is Ron Burgundy. That's all I'm looking at. So, whatever. Well, anyways, uh, it's my fake sponsor, and I say, no, it's not the florist. All right, well, you know what? I'm going to do something that most people never really do on this. I'm going to give you a no comment, and that's it. Put that in your diary. It doesn't happen much. No comment. Oh, my, I, I hope I get to write the forward for your next book. Well, there's a chance you might get in there and do something like that, as long as you behave yourself. You'll be all right. We'll figure it out. Oh, hey, you Paul, know, that's not a thing. I got to give Paul Rick a lot of credit. This guy has come a long way. I just need to smack him up across the head once in a while if he goes out there and steps on the line, but he's all right. Kudos to Orlando. Great job, buddy. <laughs> yeah, so anyways, well, once again, thank you very much for joining us. Inside the Pigskin will be on the road next week to our hometowns, at least a few of ours. Anyways, we got Jeremy's up there, George Eichhorn, Coach Bono spent some time up there, Mel, you name it. So am I leaving anybody out? Probably not. But anyways, thank you very much for joining us. And please tell your friends to share the broadcast. We always like to be able to connect with more and more people. So thank you very much, everybody. Have a good night. See you next week on the road to Detroit.